in the studio, Ping. Thank you very much for having me. All right, now I hear that you actually weren't allowed to cook when you lived under your mother's roof in the pool. Um, <laughs> oh, did she actually teach you any of her signature dishes though, growing up? Um, it depends how you um, kind of uh, describe teaching. Uh, my mom's teaching is, uh, you know, it's fast paced. So um, she, you watch and you learn and you observe rather than, you know, she won't go, oh, put a teaspoon of this, put a teaspoon of that. So even when I ask her, what, what do you put in it? She'll go, oh, you know, aga aga uh, aga aga. <laughs> That's very is, typical. That's <laughs> Malaysian. Malaysian mothers, isn't it? Yeah. What were some of the early dishes you actually taught yourself to cook, Malaysian and Western? Um, I think I started on Western because obviously in, in Malaysia, I'm sure a lot of like the Malaysians do, when they go abroad, the first thing they don't want to try is, you know, kind of European food. So I, I my the first dish I ever cooked for myself and for my flatmate was... Um, chicken wrapped in bacon and um, mm -hmm. I bake it but obviously then I didn't know how to use an oven so I use a grill instead and I remember uh, serving him a raw piece of chicken <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was the start of my experimenting uh, uh, with food with food and things got better I don't I, I don't actually um, I didn't actually uh, start experimenting Malaysian food till much, much later. Really? Uh, because then I really crave it by a few years after that. And I thought, okay, I had enough of European food now. <laughs> I really fancy nasi lemak. And I didn't actually start to cook nasi lemak until about maybe five years ago. Right. And during MasterChef in UK, you seemed very cool and calm throughout the entire season. Did anything actually happen? that turned your stomach or you know was a big ah moment for you <laughs> every time i walk into that studio that cold studio uh, my my stomach always take a turn but i know that i had to concentrate on the task at hand mm -hmm. i couldn't allow myself to actually panic um but there was one uh incident where uh, it it was a dish i had to cook to get into the quarterfinals i dropped the bowl of laksa uh, five minutes before it was due to serve. I remember the whole studio going cold and um, everyone was shouting and said, get her a bowl, get her a bowl. You know when it's like, you, you can't hear anyone, but you're yeah, just yeah. staring. Stuck in the moment, yeah. Yeah, stuck in the moment. Uh, that, that happened, but luckily I got it together and I remember muttering, don't panic, don't panic, don't panic. The competition <laughs> is rife in, s in shows like this. How did you keep your head together and stay focused? Especially considering that you're actually good friends with the other two competitors, the finalists. Yeah, we're very good friends. We talk every week. Mm -hmm. um, we still do. Um, um, I think it's a healthy competition. And we actually exchange uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, opinions when we are not filming. So mm -hmm. he'll, they'll ask, you know, uh, what do you do with this? What do you do with this? We always exchange it. We have a very healthy uh, competition. So I think that's what actually got us through. Whenever you cook stuff for your husband and all that, right? Um, has there ever been a time where you gave him food poisoning? <laughs> Never. <laughs> he claims I have, but never, no, never, never. Um, I've cooked things that I doesn't doesn't work before, and I I tell you what, my husband will not eat it if it's not. Great. Yeah, it doesn't smell right, is no, it? No, I overcooked some fish the other day, and he said to me, um, "This is not very master chef standard, is it?" <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing.